everybody back today with a traveler's notebook layout using the amazing coffee and friends collection from echo park i'm going to go ahead and start by cutting down a sheet of eight and a half by 11 paper to four by eight and then we are going to do some repeat stamping using the coordinating stamp sets that come in this collection i'm also going to be using for ink Sea Foam and Sage from Catherine Puller and the new Distress Oxide color, Rustic Wilderness. I'm going to create my pattern using my Misty and also an acrylic block as I need. So this will be um, the first in a series of Traveler's Notebook processes that will be coming to my channel in uh, the coming days because <laughs> when I went through my Traveler's Notebook uh, stash I found 14 traveler's notebooks not one not two 14 that I had started and hadn't finished uh, and I'm trying really hard to get some of these unfinished projects completed between now and the end of next year so uh, the next couple of layouts are going to be traveler's notebooks but I truly feel that it's all scrapbooking and you can find some inspiration and uh, some techniques that you could use for any size scrapbook page. For example, for this one, I'm using all of these colors. I'm sorry for my fuzzy head. It is gonna get be in there a little bit while I'm stamping the background just because I wanted to get the placement right for my stamps. I am alternating my three colors of green and I am creating an entire background of repeat stamping for my traveler's notebook. Uh, now, if you are a stamper, you could do this on just a strip of paper, maybe three by 12, four by 12, um, or you could mask off a four inch or three inch section of a 12 by 12 scrapbook page and do the same thing. This creates a fabulous border down the side of a scrapbook page, no matter what size you're scrapbooking. So it, it would definitely be something that you could translate into your next project. And that will be the case throughout the weekend and as I release the Traveler's Notebook spreads that I did. I am alternating stamps and also alternating colors. Just trying to make it so that the two, that two of the same color aren't side by side. These stamps from Echo Park are photopolymer stamps, so they stamp amazingly well. Um, I really, really like their stamps. They are small on the small side, so I don't know, unless you do the way you would use them on a larger scrapbook page is to do something like this where you're gonna collage them all together. And if you wanna see how that would uh, work, that I do have a 12 by 12 layout, from this month I think it's the one that says coffee keeps the grumpy away it is I also think it's one of my Laura Whitaker sketches possibly uh, anyway it is uh, it was released this month as well where I use this stamp set just to create a small amount of stamping so that's a great use for these stamps as well <clears throat> this layout will be coffee themed and um, I think it turned out beautiful. Again, this collection has my heart. It's uh, just, it's lovely. It's so lovely. So the other thing that I will mention about stamping like this is if you have a Misty, it does come in handy, especially since for some of these stamps, I really wanted a nice deep impression. And so I was able to stamp things twice. That being said, you'll also notice that I do have my acrylic block out. I use an acrylic block and my Misty together quite often because when I am stamping a background like this, some of these stamps are really small and I don't, I like to stamp my small stamps or the ones that have to be positioned just so I feel like I do a better job with my acrylic block than with my Misty. So having a Misty or two like I do does not preclude the need for acrylic blocks. I use them interchangeably and I do believe that that's why I get such great results with my stamping and why I enjoy it as much as I do. It really has to do with having the right tools. So I have a 
regular sized, original size Misty, and a large Misty. And then I also have my acrylic block set. My acrylic blocks are really old. They're Cricut from Provocraft Acrylic Blocks. Um, and I've had them for ages and ages and ages. So I'm just gonna continue stamping down this page. I'm putting some of the images off the edge of the page, which helps to um, create that pattern and make that pattern uh, look consistent and just fun. I really like the look of things kind of stamped off the edge of the page. I really do think that it adds a lot to just your design and your pattern. And yep, I'm watching TV while I um, do my Misty. I don't remember what I was watching while I was stamping this, <laughs> but I was watching something. Once I had that sheet of white paper completely covered in stamps, I'm gonna go through what I have here in my Coffee and Friends collection. So I've already done two 12 by 12 layouts with this collection. This will be another layout, a traveler's notebook spread. And I still have a lot more of this collection left. So I'm gonna continue to use it through January. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and decide on a title of sorts. So my title is going to be on the right of my layout. And I decided I like this one that says coffee and sunshine because this photo was taken in the summertime and it's of um, cold brew Starbucks. Mm, good stuff. And it is, um, I was in Pittsburgh. So it was a little bit of like a day out and um, my nails were super cute that day. <laughs> So um, we're going to go ahead and uh, add that right to the center of my stamping. Now I backed it in the pink to kind of contrast with the green. And now I'm going to go through the papers because I want to do another layer. I want to back up this photo or this sticker with another pattern just because I feel like it's not popping off of the stamping the way I would like it to. So I'm going to give it a second mat of a black this black buffalo check print. Now, if this was, um, if I was doing this on a scrapbook page and adding my title like this to one of, to a large section of stamping, I definitely would pop this up on pop dots because it's in my traveler's notebook. I'm not going to. And having it popped up with pop dots may preclude the need for that darker mat. But um, for me, since I don't want to add a lot of dimension to my traveler's notebooks, uh, that black just set it off. It gave it that contrast that I really wanted it to have. Okay, so basically this photo, is, this side of my page is done, but I want to add some Nouveau drops to it for just a bit more color. So it's not just green. I have that pink sticker. Let's add just a little bit more color. So this is Heritage Rose Nouveau drops. Um, I don't have a huge selection of Nouveau drops, but that's okay because I feel like I have all the ones I need. I don't feel like I'm missing something that I need. Um, these are just the regular, the crystal drops, and I'm just going to add a little bit of color with some Nouveau drops down along this side of my page, and then I'm going to set this aside to dry. I'm just going to pick it up, move it far, 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 far away from me so that my elbows don't hit it and I don't accidentally smudge the Nouveau drops. And then we'll bring it back after we're finished with the other side of our spread. One of my favorite patterns in this collection is this kind of white on white brick. And so I decide I really want to use that as the background for the other side of my spread. Remember, we have all that stamping. And so I don't want this spread to become super busy and overwhelming. I want to keep the other side of the spread light and um, on the more simple side. I'm going to cut a mat for my photo using this beautiful kind of peachy pink pattern. Um, it's just lovely. And I'm going to go ahead and mat my photo on that. So I am going to use those bricks to actually kind of line my photo up. I am so happy with how this spread turns out. I feel like Dearly D would love it. I love her. <laughs> anyway, she is so creative and fun. And as I'm watching myself create this, I'm thinking, oh, she would probably love this layout. <laughs> anyway, I am using my powder tool. I'm going to unstick a bunch of stickers because I want to be able to move them around. I'm not quite sure what I'm 
how I want to put this other side together. I know I want to keep it simple and I know that I want to keep it pretty light and bright to kind of offset all the stamping on the other side, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. So I want to make sure that I have stickers that aren't sticky. So after playing a bit in Indecision City, this is where I kind of decide, okay, this is what I want to do. I want to add the black up at the top because I know that my other page has a touch of black in it. And then I chose the two coffee cups because my coffee is a to-go coffee and these were to-go coffee cups, seemed appropriate. And then I have this little kind of subtitle and um, it doesn't have a lot of color on it. It just says, I'll drink coffee here or there. I'll drink coffee everywhere, which works because it's summertime and I am out and about in Pittsburgh. And so now when you bring in that second page, they work together, the colors work together, but you're not overwhelmed with busyness, right? And that's a really good tip if you're working, if you want to try some of repeat stamping onto another size layout, just to keep the rest of the layout on the simple side. Okay, guys, thank you so much for being here today. I hope you've enjoyed this process. Um, and I will talk to you all again very soon, probably tomorrow, because tomorrow is Quilter's Five Day. <laughs> and I have another Traveler's Notebook layout for you. All right, I'll see you all again later. Bye.